Generation Final Report, and today I will be doing a story time. I hope you guys are enjoying the story time, but it's a little different. I bought fishing line. This will be the time that I bought my very first snowmobile. And, um, you know, just a quick little story. Um, so it was, I have my birthday's in June, got a bunch of money for that, and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna buy a snowmobile. My buddy already had one, you'll be seeing him in a couple new videos. Um, and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna buy a snowmobile. He has one, I have one, I'll get one. It'll be fun, we'll ride the field side tonight. So, um, I'm working on Craigslist every day. Every day I'm working on Craigslist. And, um, I'm just coming up with different sleds now, you know, what to look for. At the time I had, I had 700 bucks. I mean, it wasn't a big deal. I could probably buy anything that, uh, was in 80s, 90s, early 2000s. That was in lower, um, mileage and pretty good quality. So, I started looking at Polaris's and Arctic Cats, and I wanted a Polaris XLT, but uh, he didn't like them. So all their junk. I didn't know what the part about snowmobiles at the time, so no one was really asking all the people what would you recommend for a beginner sled. And um, a lot of guys were saying get like a 500 fan in. So I was looking for 500 fan cold motors for the winter. Nothing big deal. And one day I came across a Ski Doo Safari, a 377 banner. It was a 92 with a real decent track. Seat was okay. Uh, skis look, they didn't look bent. Um, and um, yeah, so we, we went and looked at that and we realized uh, it could use some work. It needed a new pull cord handle, um, the recoil needs to be rebuilt, um, stuff like that, and it, um, it would have cost, uh, I think the guy wanted 250 bucks for it, and, you know, I figured, hey, I might as well just wait and get a bigger snowmobile, I really wanted a 500 or maybe a 600, I, I didn't know at the time, so, what I, best, um, did was I went every Thursday to get an Uncle Henry, um, talk to my dad's friends, see if they had any snowmobiles for sale, talk to just about everybody I could, and uh, when my, um, that didn't really work out, I was checking Craigslist every day, every day, I was even in school, and whenever I had free time, I'd pull out the phone, check Craigslist. Every day, just checking these, um, calling guys, getting pictures, getting videos of them running, and, um, and so I found, I went and looked at three snowmobiles. One was a uh, Polaris XLT, but it needed, um, a head gasket, and then, and then I looked at a, Yamaha SRX um, that needed the clutch, new clutch. It was it was a nice sled, but it needed new clutch, and that wouldn't that wouldn't be cheap. The guy wanted like six hundred bucks for it, and I said no. Um, and then the last sled I went and looked up was an eighty nine Arctic Cat Cheetah, a five hundred Van Gold motor, and I I said hey listen. Um, this is the one I'll get. Um, it was real clean. The seat didn't have cracks in it. It was a long track. It had a 156 pick. I like ice fishing, and that would have been wonderful. And then um, what what really happened? What was the and uh, what what really was the good thing is it started second cold. Um, I, it, the pipe was cold, so he hadn't been running it, and the heads were cold, he hadn't been running it, so he had to take the tarp off, he went, turn the key on, turn the choke on, give it a few little things of throttle, and then turn the choke off, and fired it, pulled it once, it spit, pulled it the second time, and it ran, and it ran fine, drove it around the yard a little bit, like, a little bit, like, a, just a quick little turnaround, to make sure that it wouldn't bog or anything, and uh, what I 
actually happened with it. Um, I did spend a little bit of money for the Hell Yeah Blood Fair bike. Hey, yeah, it was cool, but I, I mean, I still never sold it. So what I ended up doing was I split, I had, and then I bought like two guns and stuff. And I brought my money down. So I had around four hundred dollars, and uh, you know I had like four four point five. I had like four fifty or four seventy, but I mean I I wanted a little bit of money for gas and oil and stuff like that. So we're talking to this guy, and he's like, you know, seemed real nice. He was in our town. He was right down the road. So we, uh, we're like, hey, yeah, do you want, my dad's like, you want it? I'm like, you know what, yeah, I mean, worst comes to worst, we sell it, whatever, and then just, like, get a new one. And, um, so we picked it up, a week later we went to the thrift store, we ended up buying for 400 bucks, the guy wanted five, and um, I, I, ha I haggled with him, and I was like, hey, listen, I got 400 bucks, I'll give you 400 bucks cash for 20 right now. So he's like, all right, shook his hand, done deal. And then um, a week later, brought him, in, brought him the money in an envelope, and he gave me the key. It was like one of them kind of guys. He was like, hey, if you give me the key, I'll give you the money. So he gives me the key, I go over, and starts up second toll again. I get on it. Felt so good to own the snowmobile. You know, it was mine. He called it mine. I bought all my money. And um, what actually ended up happening is we get onto the trailer, haul up, we bring it home. He's like, hey, Ma, hey, Sid, come out here and check out my snowmobile. You know, they knew. They, they was looking at him, but they didn't know that I was the one who brought one home. So when I brought one home, they were like, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Started up first of all because it was already warmed up and um, didn't have a purse, so I pulled this thing and it like slid off the trailer. And it was it was heavy at first, and then of course once you get used to it, it's like five hundred pounds. And then the sun that's light, the sun that's like it, at least it had some good leverage. Um, it was a long cabby leverage on the track and the motor, and you could pick it up, throw it, and it was easy. But um. So I get it out, and, uh, yeah, I thought this thing was going to be easy. First thing I do is I go and um, go buy quarter oil, throw a quarter oil in the oil reservoir because it's oil injected. That's what I really wanted. I was like, yeah. So I fired up, and for, like, the first week since I owned a snowmobile, for, like, the first week, you know, it's probably not the best story, but I was starting it up, like, five, six times a day just, just to hear it. It sounded so clean. But then, like, what's the worst that could happen? The, my neighbors were getting upset. One of them came over and talked to me and said, hey, listen, you know, I don't want it no more. And, uh, basically, uh, they didn't like my whole thing, basically. But we got the gist of the fact that, hey, don't do it anymore. So I waited for snow, waited about another month. I bought it in like uh, late August, early September. Or um, yeah, yeah, it was like um, end. It was at end of September because I remember wearing uh, the, I still had shorts on, but I had like a sweatshirt because it was nippy enough. I had fog. So I think it was end of end of. September, we were we were in school when it happened, and I couldn't wait to tell my friends. And um, but anyways, uh, it's like waiting for snow, waiting for snow, waiting for snow. And as and as you guys should know, last year we didn't have snow until like January, February. And when we did, we had like this much snow, and then it would melt. And I was like, what the heck? I'm not even be able to ride. So. I brought over to my buddy Cole's house, you'll, you'll end up seeing him, and um, we, we we would ride when there's only like this much snow, and it was fun, because I had a fanner, but he had a liquid, so he would have to stop, let it cool down, but I had the fanner, so I'd keep ripping, I didn't even care, um, 
And it was, yeah, it was pretty awesome. I mean, by myself at home doing my own way. I mean, how else could that have gone? Like, it, I liked it. Uh, I still have it. I don't know if I'm going to sell it, but I do have the Wildcat. Um, I don't know if I'm going to show that shit yet. Um, I got to get it running. Maybe then I'll do a walkthrough or I don't know, but I'm, I'm studying the track. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, show you how to unstud the track because a lot of people are having a controversy on do I remove the studs out of the old track or not? My opinion, yes. If it is liquid cooled, yes. If it is fan cooled, don't worry about it. If it's liquid cooled, remove the studs out of the track because what will happen is you have a heat exchanger in the tunnel. I know for Arctic Cats, you do. Polaris's, they're usually underneath the running board of the snowmobile. And um, so that's usually how that works. But if you don't, you could throw, if you don't remove them, you could throw a pick, which means you're riding and it rips through the track. What can happen is that could pop your heat exchanger. You may not know. You may be riding in powder. All your coolant flows out of the back heat exchanger. Nothing's cooling your engine. Nothing's taking that heat away. It's cooling it down. And if you don't have a temperature gauge or anything, you may not know until it's too late. You can, you can blow a piston, blow a ring. Seize your motor, it could just get too hot. Um, so that's kind of like the basic of make sure um, that your track's in good condition. Um, this one is in pretty good condition, has more lug than the Cheetah. Um, I'm expecting it to go faster because it's a 650 liquid. Um, finally got a new card for it. Um, didn't the the carbs were seized this one got one of them done the other one I needed to replace and um, <coughs> excuse me but I hope you enjoyed today's story I know I've cut off the wildcat but I will you know make a post later that telling you guys how I acquired that and what I see it happen so until then Please like, share, subscribe for more. Like I said, more to come in the future. As long as you stay tuned, stay subscribed, you will, uh, hopefully you're happy on what you see. I mean, we got the boys over at Andrew Andrew TV not knowing what they're doing. They may have more YouTube videos, but they have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Well. Have a good day, folks.